This week's episode of Wave Files is brought to you by DC Sports Apparel. This casual and athletic brand can be found exclusively at TeamDCSportsApparel.com. Drive what moves you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Wave Files. Of course, my name is DJ Reg West. Woo! This week's guest. Um, I've known him for a long time, man. We <laughs> we have done some shows in the past, baby. Um, we've been overseas together. We've done some amazing shows together. I've watched him evolve and grow as entertainer. He started off as, to me, as a dancer, a choreographer, and a DJ, and now he's chefing, really chefing up in the kitchen. <laughs> Yo, my man does it all. This is one of my homies, one of my good friends, ladies and gentlemen. This is my guy, DJ Doug. Yo! What up, Reg? What up, Reg? What up, Reg? How you feeling, fam? I'm feeling great, baby. I woke up this morning. All praises to the man upstairs. Facts, 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 facts. You look sharp, man. Look, you you got your Sunday's best on for me today, bro. bro Sunday's best on a Wednesday. I told you. I knew I was coming <laughs> to sit down with a legend itself, so I had to come correct. You know I had oh, to come man. correct. You know, oh just, man, listen, listen. I, 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 <laughs> I told you, I told you offline. I told you offline, but again, bro, thank you for taking some time to, to sit with me on this Wave Files podcast. This is something yeah. like it's, it's funny you you wearing some flowers on your shirt because it's partially flowers. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like like I, I'm I, it's partially this is partially giving my friends their flowers on top of of giving the folks out there information on like listen y'all can do this too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I started here, but I figured out my way X Y Z do 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 to get to where I had to get to. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so let's just let's just get into it, Dubs man. Listen, like like I said on the intro, um. You are a dancer, choreographer, yes. DJ, chef. Have I missed any? Have I missed anything, sir? Definitely a dad. Okay, from a professional standpoint, yes, yes, I didn't miss anything, <laughs> but yes, you, you are you are Daddy been. Dubs as well. The yes, chef, DJ yes. Daddy and, Dubs is what people like to call me. <laughs> Yo, Yo. We get into it. I also, you know, like. I want to give you your flowers for creating a platform like this, oh, to, you know, to educate your, you, you know, your friends, your families, um, and, and your followers, you know, because they don't know, and uh, you, you're taking the opportunity to bridge brands, which is great, you know, a lot of people nowadays, or back in the days, were very much like, this is my brand, this is me, they didn't want to share the information, they didn't want to help people get to the top, so I, I commend you for doing something like this, thank you very much. Thank no, you. thank you, man. And, and and just to add on to what you said, it's it's a it's a very famous quote. It's like instead of you can't always reach up, you gotta reach left, you gotta reach right. You Ooh. know what I mean? Like yes. you know what I'm saying? Like like yep. you gotta reach left. Like your dog is right here. What you going like, yo? What <laughs> he we need doing? help. <laughs> he need help, yo. <laughs> you um, know, a lot of people don't want to do this and go up. They just want to do this. So you know, I, I feel reach right, reach left. Because that's the only way you're gonna climb sometimes. You got to go like this, you it's know? It's a fact. So, yeah. It's a fact. Um, let's, let's start. Let's start at the beginning. Well, I, I guess the beginning for me and you. We met. Wow. I don't want to date wow. us. But, <laughs> but, 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 but I'm not going to say the year. But we <laughs> met when I was, I, I was filling in. Shout out to DJ 45. I started four, five, filling four, in five. for. <laughs> I started DJ, I started filling in for four or five with, with an artist by the name of Jojo. And oh, you wow. and Jojo. your crew, yep, you and your crew were background dancing for her, and we clicked so fast, all of us, <laughs> <It was> like <laughs> yo, immediately. <laughs> yo, I yo. remember being overseas with you, acting a fool. I remember <laughs> all types of amazing, crazy stuff, man. Um, can you tell and can you tell the people how you decided to get involved in dancing and why dancing initially became your i guess if, if i'm if and correct me if i'm wrong your your first form of adult professional income yes um dancing you know my mom would tell it the in the short version i was 
raising hell around the house. Dead just, <laughs> just everything was just, just, she was like, he would not stop moving, wouldn't stop dancing. So um she, you know, she spoke to a couple people. They they told her about a dance school that was happening on East Fourth and Church. Shout out to my amazing dance teacher, dance mom, Miss Janet. I love her dearly. She's like one of my second mothers. Um, great woman, embraced, embraced the art form and helped me get to the level where I've gotten. I started there in ballet, tap, and jazz at the age of three and became an assistant dance teacher at about the age of 14. <laughs> Nice. Because Early I was, I, I, yes, I was, I was, I, I wanted to understand the ways and, and, you know, at that time and point, I knew I wanted to be a choreographer, but she said when I got to the studio, it was just like, he wouldn't stop moving. They was like, miss, you have to put him in our school. And she was like, oh, I don't know. She was like, you know, two, three years in, my mom could afford it. It was, I was the only boy there, full scholarship after that, just mm. for me to stay. Um, and at that point, my mom and everybody at the studio knew that he was, I was gifted and talented, and you know, where, where, where this energy came from. So I started young. I started in the arts, tap, jazz, ballet, modern, uh, got to, got to high school and I wouldn't say rebelled, but I found another love, which was hip hop, uh, met a crew and boogie shout out to Mount boys to the day I died. Mount boys, family, you already life. know. You know, take your time to go back and do some research. We were the first hip hop commercial group on BET representing Spring Bling. So, you know, that's a my boys with a Z, ladies and gentlemen. A M O U N T B O I Z. <laughs> so, you know, in, 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 in connecting with a brother like Anthony, I've, I came from not only the artistic for, uh, back, background, but in learning being at the dance studio i was at being an assistant dance studio uh teacher also competing i uh, was you know like mr dea star power I was, you know i went into all the competitions bridging the gap of fusing dance together in one routine two three minutes they were like did you just do a tap jazz and ballet solo in one number yes i did i was i was already trying to bridge that gap so then also bring business side to it when i met anthony and the amount boys that's when we 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 fuse my knowledge and his knowledge, um, you know, same age, uh, birthdays seven days apart. We you know we were destined to meet, um, and you know we went to the same school. Shout out to Laguardia High School, the famous school. High School. I already knew he was gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> the fame school has has paved the way for me, uh, but you know, given the name, but having the knowledge as well. Got into high school. I was very much already into the arts. I took both seriously, but at that time is when hip hop became self-taught for me. Uh, I was still going to Alvin Ailey. I was still going to Dance Theater of Harlem. I was still going to School of American Ballet, attempting to join the New York City Ballet Company. So I, I wanted it all at that point. Uh, it got to the point where I realized, and I've I studied all the dancers that were on TG, t excuse me, TV, along with Aunt Boogie, and realized that. Mm -hmm there's a different type of career out there that I grew to love for. Um, seeing these people tour, going from bad boy artists to bad boy artists to, to, to Drew Hill and just like, yo, knowing, and that's what a lot of dancers don't do to this day. And this is why I'm also glad you're doing the show, but they didn't take time out to understand what other dancers, commercial dancers were paving the way, what street dancers that didn't have the artistic background are now working for these major labels and befriending these artists. You know, I was watching Janet have the same dancers for 10 years, yeah. knowing Tina Landon and, you know, Shanette Hurd and Gil and, you know, shout out to the Eddie Morales and the Punch and the Goofs that I've met when they were on the Into the Drew tour, dancing with Faith Evans and then dancing with Biggie and then popping over to Boyce Man and Drew Hill. I was just like, we knew there was another world out there. Once I got a taste of it, going to an audition and making like the MTV Hip Hop Week with my crew, that changed my life. Like, and that's when I was like, this is what I want to do. I was already choreographing at the age of 16, just got, you know, because of, because of being at Janet's Dance Studio, I was helping create these, these full scale performances that would happen in Brooklyn College, three day weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three hour show. And included everything and i was able to bring you know my jazz jazz is what kind of the street jazz which it was called back then 
is what pushed me to do hip hop a little more. So, mm -hmm. you know, under, uh, you know, taking that knowledge and continuing to reach for the stars. I quit School of American Ballet because I went on tour with 3LW <clears throat> and the Destiny's TRL tour. And I came back and it was- Hold on, hold hold right there. How did you get on a tour? How did that happen? Okay, so rewind, let me recap. Um, in high school, me and Aunt, we went to a couple of auditions. We used to read this magazine, Backstage Magazine. That's where you Backstage had Backstage Magazine. That's where you had to find the auditions. Um, in the shortest way possible, we did MTV Hip Hop Week. We, you know, we cut school one day. <laughs> <laughs> went outside and danced out front of MTV Studios. Now, if you remember MTV, they used 15, to always- 15, 15 Broadway, my 15, guy. 15 Broadway, baby. <laughs> they used to look out the window and just, you know, just like have the dancers and everything going on. Man, we cut school one day, went to an audition for Total, got turned away because they, they didn't even look at us when we, when we walked in. They were just like- Why? <laughs> Wait, why do you like, think that? <laughs> because- Were y'all too young? What happened? Yeah, the, the audition was for black men, um, for male men, um, for Total Kissing You video. This was Kissing You. And then okay, all the so guys are like, walking in. Wait, what, that's like, it's like 2002? It's, 2001? No, we, still, we still in the 90s. I'm still 90s? In school. Yeah. Oh, still, that's I'm right. Still, okay. I'm still in okay, high okay, school, okay, right? Okay, okay, okay. Yo, so um, we, we see the audition and we're like, yo, we got to go. Right, me and Aunt were like, "Yo, we not going to dance this time." We go, we get our outfits, we pull up to the auditions. I think it was, it might have been at, um, oh my God, not Ailey. The other, what was Ailey's rival? Well, it wasn't really a rival. Stepping Out Studios. It was the Stepping Out Studios. Okay. And we got there. All these, we seen all these big brawl like dancers, like Bam Bam, I'm in Ra. TikTok, um, we're seeing oh um, legends, know, people, legends, basically people legends. from the mop top crew, like the dance, the male dancers in New York that we were seeing on TV. Yo, we walked in to sign in, the lady ain't even look up. We like, yo, we did my boys, the answer. She was like, No, sorry. <laughs> Didn't even look up. We like, yo, we here to audition. They was like, sorry. And then she looked up, she was like, Y'all gotta go. I was like, welcome to the business, my guy. Welcome, welcome to, the business. to the business. But that was our door. That was our, that was our entry door because we did our research. We go outside. We see Eddie Morales and it was like, yo, that's Eddie Morales. Like we knew that's yo, the bad boy school, dancer. school people, school people on, on, on who he <clears throat> is because, because I, I'm aware, but give people a, 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 little, a, a little more clarity. You might even have to get him on. Like, I might have to, like, make that connection so he can really <laughs> talk talk his talk and walk his walk. And I'm going to tell you how, I, again, like, we don't meet people for nothing because I'm going to tell you how long Eddie knew of me but didn't know it was me until he met me in the future. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Tying it back to Janet's dance studio. Mm -hmm. um, we go outside. We see an, we're seeing Eddie and, you know, like, shout out, rest in peace, Footprint. These are people that were in these music videos. Eddie Morales has danced for everyone. Justin Timberlake, Brandy, Aaliyah, um, Mariah, choreographer, choreographer extraordinaire too. Walk along, you know, um, Drew Hill, Boyz II Men, Giddy. The, the list, every artist you can think of, he has either has danced and choreographed for. And that's how long he's been in the game. And we knew gotcha. that because we saw him dancing with Jerome at the time. Said you're too young for me. Yeah. Or is it say you too old for me? I'm, <laughs> oh, a, I'm messing up the, I'm messing up the lyrics. Oh, yo, you took me back. <clears throat> I, I, I see the video right now where he's where he's on he's on the stoop. Oh, yeah, the day was on a fire yeah, station. You're too he's old dancing. for me. That's, That's the video. Yo, so now we go out there. We tell him, yo, we the Mount Boys. We dance. We blah 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 blah. We trying to get in. We kicked us out the audition. He was like, yo, we gave him my card because you know at the time we were businessmen. We were ran a, running an a entertainment company in high school, Mount Entertainment, which is... You had, the, wait, wait, you had your Staples business card? You had that Staples business card ready to go? We went, we went beyond Staples, bro. We found a printing company, logo and everything, phone number, email address. And this time, we didn't have cell phones, so it had our house numbers on it. <laughs> <laughs> bro, 
<laughs> Gave him a business card. You know, the rest of our day was done. We went over to MTV, was dancing outside. We got picked up by someone saying something, but we were like, yo, we got to wait by the nigga. Anthony went home every day and waited for a call. So did I. I was in dance school, so I couldn't. So I'd be like, mom, if anybody calls, let me know. Three months later, Eddie Morales calls. Like, yo, I want you to go meet a friend of ours. Um, I want you to go meet this choreographer, Lorianne Gibson at Rocket Studios. Now, I know, you know, Rocket Studios. That's where that's where all the magic was made too on 37th Street, right by the West Side Highway. You know, yes, sir. If you if if you know New York, you knew that was the underground. That was our underground SIR center stage in New York. <clears throat> um, she's like, yo, he got new artists, young cat named Jerome, bad boy. We want young dancers with him, so on and so forth. Me and Ed was like, yo, this is our opportunity. Now, we already did MTV. We even had this MTV gear. Remember doing it? We ended up getting Sean John and the MTV Hip Hop Week. Great hat. Got that free great, promo green package jacket. gear? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ed, like, yo, we're going tomorrow. We're leaving school. we getting dressed together. We're going to be, we're going to walk in like, yo, you booking us. The minute we walk in, now, shout out to Lorian, you know. Me and her, we had a great history in the beginning. Different, not even differences now that like we've grown up. We are we're on different paths. Um, I love her in her own special way. Um, we walk in the room, she's on the phone, like, yeah, yeah, you know how she get. If people know Laurier, she's already like these honey bunches, da, 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 and did it, and did it, you need to did it, da, 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 da. and as soon as we walk in, she's like, Who's at the door? And we're like, Yo, Adrian and Anthony William, my boys, Eddie sent us. She's like, oh, my God. I love you guys already. You guys, oh, my God. You guys are fair. Look at you, honey, bunches of oats. Oh, my God. Y'all can dance. That was it. We just hit a freestyle, and she was like, booked. Literally, I, we got booked on the spot for Jerome like that. And that, and that's the beginning That's of the beginning the of my professional my prof in the in the record label professional dance career. Now, a lot of people will say you're considered in the professional career when you already starting getting paid to do what you do. So, sure, if we you know we you know we we backtrack a bit. I was already being paid as a as a professional dancer in the artistic world because of competitions and and sure. already teaching those dance master classes and so on and so sure. forth. But sure, in sure. the underground community, in the commercial industry. That was our first stamp. Yo, Brandy. so 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 we could be here for, for nine hours going run, running on your resume, but but please <laughs> get tell tell people some of the some of the the highlight music videos that you've been in over the years. Ooh. So of course, one that was big was 3LW No More. You know, no more. Maybe I'm gonna do it right. Um Mario Just a Friend. Mm-hmm. Um uh jojo too late get out oof I, I feel like i need my resume in front of me <laughs> um i i ain't gonna i ain't gonna i ain't gonna hold you i ain't gonna i ain't gonna hold you crazy because <laughs> because you said jojo so and, and so, so you, and you said should, jojo. We should, we should so, stop right there like right there. stop right there <laughs> stop right jojo. there so so um when did you start touring with artists i started touring with artists in 98 like right when oh. that bad boy, right when they, right when we got that bad boy stamp, when we was working with bad boy. Let me cut back to that real quick. So Lorianne had the job, whatsoever the reason it was. We brought the amount boys in. Um, we didn't hear about it for a couple of weeks. This is you know this is how the industry works, right? We didn't hear about it for a couple of weeks. We're supposed we're two weeks away to shoot in a video. I have to bring this up because this is our introduction to Janet Jackson. Uh, we get a call from Harp Year. Like, yo, come down to the bad boy office. We like, what? Now we like, yo, sh we about to meet Diddy. Now this was our dream in high school to meet Diddy. Like we ran a Mount Boys because bad boys, like there, there's, a, ah. there's, there's, there's a whole, we wanted to be a Mount because bad boys had total. Like there's a whole synergy to this, to this movement. So now, we like, yo, he was like, yo, come, you got to join the meeting, da-da-da-da. We get in the room, it's Gil, 
Now the Janet Jackson dancers and choreographers are in the room with Harv, um, Jerome, his family, the A and R's, the, the the publicist, and here come me and Anthony walking in like, yo, what are we walking into? At this time and point, we didn't understand how reckless the business was about to get or is mm. at the and ruthless mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. They were getting ready to replace us in our face in the office. Like, I was like, yeah, so these are the dancers that they got, you know, but we want to move in a different direction. We got to take Jerome to the next level. Now, the reason why they brought us on with Jerome, because he was 15, 16. So he right. went to Talented Unlimited, or was it PPAS? He probably went to either TU or PPAS, which was, of course, not the rival, but like the brother sister school of LaGuardia. So okay. um, we sitting there and we're like, we now we know who's in the room already. We're looking like, yo, that's Gil. That's Teresa. That's Charnette. But what are the Janet dancers doing here? Like, like what? I had no idea that mm -hmm. they at that moment they were they were typecasting us to see who's going to be with jerome oh so they, they they literally brought you in on some like damn that's that's like that's cold so basically it's, it's like it's like almost like a, that's like that's like putting like all right what y'all what y'all got okay what y'all got and damn <laughs> cold D. straight up oh so we're like, you know, we spoke up like, yeah, we've been in a hurry. He was like, well, I was like, well, Lorian ain't got this project no more. We moving forward. We brought in Sean and her, you know, and so we're like, you understand? Well, he was like, I'm like, yo, we three songs in. And they was like, all right, well, what y'all got? Did you just ask us what we got? Oh, right. <laughs> you ask the amount boys to show out at this point. Mind you, conference room, you know them conference rooms? Ten at the table, tiny. Wait, Jerome's wait. At the office at the bad boy office. Bad boy office conference. Oh, room. I know, I know exactly what that conference you room know, looked like. The, I remember the one right on forty. Was it fortieth Street or forty forty second? Right off. This of this is Square. before. This, wait, this if that's ninety eight. I wasn't I wasn't coming into the city yet. I was I I wasn't even involved in the business yet. But I think that was still there when I was moving around in like oh three. And yes, that that conference room was kind of tiny. So continue. Still there because I think it was Aster Studios, whatever. It was right around the corner from Tower Records. They, ain't, they yeah, 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 yeah. Same yeah, place. Yo, Diddy walks in. They all sitting there. Jerome sitting there. So we're like, "Yo, play his music. We're gonna show you the choreo." Like straight up, and Jerome's there, like smiling because we supposed to be his boys. That was the whole thing. That's how he wanted to move. Right. We the right. first song, the second song, and then the single "Dairy Vet." We're about to start. And they're like, oh, okay, all right, cool. All right, well, you know what? We see what's going on here. Thank you, fellas. We'll see y'all later. They send us off. Wow. We ain't hear nothing for about a week. We get a call from Shonat. Rehearsals are starting. We need to find two more of your boys. To, 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 we, we're going to keep the package the way it is. So now we able to bring on two more Mount Boys. That's how the Mount Boys really got in. Let me gotcha. let me tighten this up a bit. So we met Seanette that way. Gil was there, you know, um, and this is how we met Janet. Now we knew if there was a possibility of meeting Janet it would be through these through these actual people. Right. Kid you not, for two weeks straight, one day we're in rehearsal, going blood, sweat, and tears. Door flies open. I feel like it is. Let me tell you one of those scenes out the movies where the door flies open. <laughs> you don't see nothing but a shadow and smoke and just a long black veil. So you look over like, woof. That's where it happened in slow motion. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Here it comes walking in. Hi, everybody. I'm Janet. We know who you are. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Janet Jackson just walked into Rocket Studios like nothing. And we were just As like, a superstar should. Introdu let me introduce myself. Let me not be too high of myself. I'm going to tell you my name even though, I, even though I know you know who I am. Yeah. I remember younger days when... I 
That's what happened. <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> you remember? Yo, you just did it like 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 you remember it like vividly. Exactly, because I remember what part of the choreography we were doing. Dear Yvette, I remember youngest do 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 up like, oh shoot, yeah, man, and frozen JB, all of us frozen. Janet Jackson just walked in the goddamn room, and at that point she came to rehearsal every. Now I'm going back to school, telling everybody nobody believing us. Nobody like believes Janet you. Of not. Janet Jackson's here in rehearsals. We leave in school. This is this, every this, day this, this, this is this is pre-social media. This is this is this is what, what was the what was the phones? The um damn pre sidekick, pre Motorola, pre pre not no, what, it was like it was like the straight Motorola well, we, phone. Like you had like the like the like the flip phone. That was the Motorola the, phone back the then. Nextel, that was it. Yep. That was mm-hmm. I was right. Yep, yeah, right before Nextel joint. No, yep. no, no camera phones or anything. Could no take camera pictures. phones. I think we had sidekicks at the time, but they couldn't take pictures or nothing like. No, nah, believe us. Right. Telling the story every day, like we just had rehearsal and Janet sat in. We come in every day, like we made Janet Jackson drink a tropical fantasy and took her to McDonald's, like in the mall. <laughs> Wait, what McDonald's did you take Janet Jackson to? Which one? The one on Eighth Avenue between thirty thirty third and thirty fourth, right there. Like it was on Eighth <laughs> Avenue. The McDonald's right there, and then next door there had this ghetto ass ghetto store. I forgot. We, and we went in. We got her, uh, you know, the pink tropical fantasy. Uh. <laughs> got her the pink tropical fantasy, and uh, and she she paid for it. She said, like, "Kill get whatever you want." And we was like, "What do you want to eat?" She was like, "I want to eat McDonald's." We were like, "We went in to get McDonald's," and don't, I'm like, "People at McDonald's don't even know Janet Jackson is right outside in a goddamn limo." Oh, she didn't come inside. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I was I was on some like Janet walked into the McDonald's, looked looked at looked at the menu. I want a cheeseburger. Nah, no, okay, okay, okay. She 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 waited in the car. Okay, she, but, all right, all right. But still, like for her to be like, guys, hungry, leave Rocket Studios, get in the car with her, and go do all this. So then come back and rehearse. So anyway, the first day she walks in, she's her and Charnette Kiki in on the couch talking about. Oh my God, these girls dope. And she was like, show me. We ran the whole show. She was like, don't mess up. <laughs> By that time, I was already confident because I'm like, Janet's in the room. Now, was, we don't hit another level anyway. So that was my story being in 98 of how I, I, I got into touring because after that, we shot the video. You know, things went down there. Jerome got sick the day of the video, but they paid money for the video. So we shot a two-day video just as dancers. Um, and then after that, Lorianne called us again for our artist named Keisha uh, with Eddie. And that's what we did. Um, um, ooh, the, 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 keep it real, the Keep It Real album. That's when we first went on tour with Keisha. So we started touring like the South with Keisha. We did. That's when we first... My first appearance on Soul Train was with Keisha. <laughs> first time in LA, like, yo, now we now we're in LA. Now we're traveling. Now we're getting paid. RCA Records. Um, boom. And from that point on, it was like 99, <clears throat> 2000, we auditioned. We heard about an audition for 3LW with Jamal and Rosero at the time. People like choreographers like Showtime was um auditioning and so on and so forth. We auditioned for 3LW, did no more. Mm-hmm. We got in, you know, whatever happened there, Showtime became choreographer. And then he came in and did the tour and we stayed on the job. The girls love us. That's why Maturi to this day is my best friend. Maturi Norton, yes, Miss St. Patrick is one of my best friends. <clears throat> so if you know the story at 3LW, you know how things went up and down, whatever. Yep, we all know how that story went. We, we ain't never been to that. <laughs> yeah, um, but then went from 3LW. I ended up doing a couple things, choreographing with them. I also assisted Jamaica Craft. Then we became the choreographers. Then, you know, the business works in mysterious ways. I was no longer on that job. Then when Maturi left, it felt funny to me. So I did as well, too. A couple other people stayed. Lorianne called me about Mario. And she was like, I need you and the amount, boys. And then. Mario, we were in at Mario, toured with him, Screen 3 tour, 2002, 2003, 
And this time I turned down Fatima Robinson, the biggest choreographer at the time. Like wow. I'm touring with the Amount Boys. We're doing our own show. We're teaching at Broadway Dance Center. We want to rise. Like everything was Amount Boys, Amount Boys, Amount Entertainment Company. We're now building our music and on this side and, and art and just building. Like I said, we had a high school, in high school, we had an entertainment company, S Corp Entertainment Company. Like Saturn Chase Bank was like, no, give us this. We want this. We need this loan. We need these cards. Uh, fast forward real quick. Lorian calls us again for JoJo. Hey, I got this new artist. Her voice is golden. Duh, 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 duh. Her first single, <laughs> Leave Get Out. Now I'm meeting with JoJo. We, we At this point, we didn't have an audition because the Amount Boys already set a presence and made a name. <clears throat> now, now let's now let's pause there because this is this is where our paths intersect. Shout out to my big bro four five. Um, um, I was um, I, I was filling in for him on some JoJo gigs, which turned into months of JoJo <laughs> gigs. <laughs> um, and we we did some stuff in the states. Um, we did we did some shows in in Brooklyn. No, not in Brooklyn, in Jersey for the Nets. Mm, we did oh, we did yeah. some like we did like a tour. Um, in the like we like when it was like the summer jams, we did all the all the, all the, all the summer jams, right? And then we, we went TV overseas shows for and, tour. yeah, the European TV shows too, right? Yep. yep. Did you do Hawaii? Yep. No, I didn't do Hawaii. I wish I would have did Hawaii. I was tight. Uh, I was like, "For you coming back? Oh, come <laughs> on, no. no, come on! I'm going to the Hawaii, fam. What's wrong with you?" Um, but nah. So 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 the European leg, right? Yeah. That like that was was that my first time overseas? I think that was my first time overseas yeah. because when I started working with JoJo, I was still very green, like mm. super duper 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 upa upa green to the business. Like I've been I was DJing since I was a kid, but yeah. not like on some like contracts and and sign this and mm -hmm. and you got to need your passport for that and social security card for this. We we went to go do one of the shows. I think it was like a Disney show where like we had to perform a song or something like that. And they had they had us fill out this paperwork, like, all right, you guys gotta fill out this paperwork to get paid. Da, da, da. And they were kind of trying to rush us, like, yo, we gotta do the show now. And you were like, hold on, hold on, we're yo, reading I the don't paperwork. Remember that? <laughs> You're like, yo, hold on, we're reading the paperwork that you're asking us to sign. I'm not signing nothing and just going to perform. Were you crazy? So you were reading it over, and then you came back like, nah, we're not performing. This is our rate, and our rate isn't in here. I'm calling my my manager. Calling my agent. <laughs> yo, yep. you stall, yo, you stall production, and I'm looking around like this motherfucker's a G. Like yo, <laughs> like because I I was so like I said so green to anything. Like I'm like even if I read it, like <laughs> what am I going to do? Not perform? And like you and you pretty much taught me like yes, you're not going to perform. <laughs> you're going to wait, and and everything's going to get figured out because they're going to try to sun you. This they is the do, business. Man, do these these contracts, even with NDAs now, they try to slip that we can use your likeness for this. Oh, it's an NDA. I'm not, you're not, you don't get to use my likeness in the NDA. The NDA means I'm just not going to talk about it. I'm not going to put it out there. What that got to do with BTS? But they be trying to slip that in there and be like, oh, yeah, you signed this in the NDA. The BTS, see, we, we signed off on that. We can use your likeness for anything. No, you're not. And, you know, I, I'm glad. Again, I didn't have people to teach me that. I got screwed over a couple times and I got an agent. And then luckily my agent then is my agent to this day. And wow. <clears throat> they have not wow. been, just, you know, they had a, we got, the, we got our up and down issues. Sometimes they'll be like, sure. yo, you really let that job walk? Like you, you put me in that position? But 90% of the time, shout out to Block Talent Agency. Um, I got, you know, it's a, it's a hub, the New York department, the LA department. They have always looked in my best interest. And back then I was just like, I'm not signing this until my agent reads it. And nice. I'm like, and I knew what my dance rate was. And thankfully I knew what the 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 TV rates were because and, I got and, and 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 we're overseas. So, <laughs> so the conversion rate, what we're doing over here. Yo, I was like, this don't seem right. And I, I like I said, I got burnt a couple of times and I wasn't gonna get burnt again. You only gotta happen once. You know, right. and I wasn't going to let everybody right. else it happen around too either because me, Kenny, Craig, Connect, we were all under block. So, you know, we read that. And even now, now when I think back on it, now that there's a music union, I'm like, shoot, you should have been given an ASCAP contract at that time. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> Hindsight is 2020, my friend, especially when you're green and like and like you, like you, there was nobody teaching me anything. Like it was just like, I'm here to DJ. Okay, sign this. And you know what I mean? Yeah, there like was, there was nobody no teaching you contract. the business. Yeah, now it's like dang. But it's but it's it's so different nowadays, right? Because everything is online, <laughs> everything is 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 available for you to research at in the palm of your hand. Yeah, so you get the information easy. Easy, right? Yep. Wow. Yo, but that JoJo tour overseas was, was dog. <laughs> Yo, is. I had so much fun with y'all overseas. It was dog. a blessing to our beautiful connection. Like you we're still we're still here to this day. And then just you being in that part of my life, you know, 2010, when I literally woke up one day and I was like, I want to be a DJ. All I saw back then was Red West, 4-5, Rampage. Um, at the time, um, my, my cousin Chase used to do our mixes, DJ Chase, Scratch, and Jazzy Jeff. And I was just like, um, I could do this, you know? And I was Michigan. like, I woke up, literally, I was like, I could do this, you know? <clears throat> And then a couple people along the way that I asked about shading me was like, yo, nah, stay in your lane. Like, what? It's the wrong thing you could tell me. I remember I called you and you was like, all right, Dubs. He's like, yeah, I'm clearly, like, he was like, yo, you still dancing now? I was like, yeah, I might still dance, but I really want to DJ. Like, he was, I was like, and I told you, I was like, I'm going to get techniques. And then he was like, you were like, I kid you not, he was like, you said, all right, it's not going to be easy. Yeah, and I was like, I took that information. I was like, I, and I was like, I, yeah, thank you. I know it's not. You gave me your blessing. You said, yo, if that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. And I was like, all right, cool, I'm going to do it. And at that moment, like, when the people like you and 4 5, when I told it to, said things like that, I was like, I got to make these niggas proud. I, right then and born, I was like, I have to make them proud. Like, at that. And I was also doing it because I got tired of throwing my own events, trying to find a DJ, and the dancers are like, yo, this DJ's not playing for us. They just club DJs. You know, <laughs> we had Hard Hit and Harry at the time that was only playing house. And, you know, like, shout out to Voodoo Ray, rest in peace. Like, he rest believed in, peace, in the Ray. events Went that up. he was, we, we, you know, he believed in the events that we were throwing. And I was like, I'm, I, we couldn't find a DJ. I was like, I'm going to do it. You know, Mount Boys ain't never need nobody before. And give me six months. Lock myself in a room. I went and got 1,200. I had the Behringer mixer. I got Serato. And this is when it was all digital. Now, the mm. funny thing about it is, now, I was on the digital platform prior because when I used to teach at Broadway Dance Center, I used to make mixes on my Windows computer. PC DJ, where I tell people that they're like, <laughs> when I used to tell people I'm a DJ, and they were like, nah, you ain't a DJ because we don't do it on the computer. It was digital. I was like, fine, I'm gonna just make mixes to dance to in class. Right, right. That's where I was making mixes. And then I was like, yo, let me remember those mixes, the same mixes I did. I'm like, let me try to do them the same exact way. On the, Technically, this is analog. Even though now Spot was digital, it was still analog. I still had records. I still had needles. It was time coded, but I had a catalog of music because of being a dancer and just be hanging around people like you, hanging around the four or five, understanding how to keep the crowd going and being in the clubs and so on and so forth. I was like, I got a job to do six months. Took myself, locked myself in through my first gig, went up to Voodoo Ray when he was at Katra, promoting Katra, R&B Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. and um, you know, heavy hitters was the, the opening DJ, the, uh, the closing DJ. And one day I was like, yo, Voodoo, um, you know, when I, you know, when I get better, so on and so forth, I'm trying to open. He was like, well, we just lost our opening DJ. You want to do tonight? <laughs> Look at God. <laughs> he was like, we, we, I, I need somebody to open, um, for Big Ben, Big Ben, Big Ben, 97 Big Ben, like. Wait, what? Now, you know me, the same thing I did with dancing, I did with DJing. I went and studied, like, who's on the radio. I was like, all right, there's Clue, there's Flex, there's this, there's that. Who's at 107? Who's at, um, who's on 
105, who's on 106, who's on 97, who's on 98 points. I was studying the radio at this time because that's what I knew y'all used to do. Y'all used to get to a, get to a city and say, all right, this is popping in the South. This is that. Just you, you have to I know remember. The, come on, <laughs> man. Sitting in a hotel room. I remember. Doing your research. All right, cool. Listen, all right, top 100. Did it. All right, cool. I'm going to drop All right, so, so, so people, so people. So, so what he's talking about, <laughs> what he's talking about, let me, let me, let me, let me clarify. So being a touring DJ, right, and you're, and you're with an artist, you have an open up set that you do to warm up the crowd. And sometimes you get a break set in between, a, uh, in between an artist set. Sometimes dancers will dance. So mm -hmm. in New York, the records are going to be different as popping in New York versus Atlanta versus mm -hmm. LA versus mm -hmm. Chicago. So what do we do when we get to the city? All right, what's popping? What's what's on, what's what's what's, what's, what's on the radio station top ten? Okay, let me call the local DJs. All right, that's our records popping. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I know what not to do Dude, when I hit that stage. <laughs> you know, artists, artists was popping with other artists. You drop a record, you get that boo. Like you ain't ready for all that. And then the time, there's certain dancers that didn't understand that. Cause they were like, Yo, we can't dance to this. But at the end of the day, you like, I gotta play for them. I can't play for you Facts. right now. Facts. So it's ten thousand people out here, dog. I can't like, worry about your five. Y'all five better get with it. Let's go. Yeah, yo, and you know, but that's what made our crew so dope. Be, and you know, other artists, I'm watching them rock with other DJs, and they're just like, we can't dance to that. I'm like, y'all have no idea. Uh, so you know, I took all that information. Fast forward, knew who Big Ben was. I came in my first night, I was rocking because I wanted to show it. I was just rocking because not even for him, but I was like, Voodoo Ray just put me, he was like, you got your laptop? Yep, he's like, we got Serato, you got your needles? I was always ready in my car, backpack, two records, four records actually, four needles, and just my Serato box just in case. Of green, green. Um, he was like, yeah, this is when parties 9 a.m., 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Big Ben wasn't coming till about 1. So mm -hmm. I was on, nine, doors open at 8, I'm there, 9, like, nobody's in Katra at all at that time. Nope. 9, I'm playing till about, people don't show up till like 11. Yep. And that was, my goal at that point was... You just got to keep playing R&B night, 90s R&B night. I just played 80s and 90s all the way. And I was like, if Big Ben's open, he's going to play all the hits. So I can't play any of the bangers. Woo! Thank you for knowing that super early, sir. Thank you for knowing that super early. Continue. Continue. This is, you know, I, I was like, I wasn't there to show up. I was there to keep. So, but when he You're there to do in, a job. There You're there to, to do, do a job. job. You're there to open up for Big Ben. Do the but job. The, the bag that I was in when he came in, like he didn't even go on until two because I was. That's how much I had the crowd rocking. Also, so, because so so he allowed you to breathe, allowed me to breathe, but also because I didn't know how to switch out at that time. I'm green. <laughs> this the this the this the way you gotta put a record on, switch out a Serato and play like play a vinyl record. To, just to just to keep the crowd going, not stop like, and keep the same BPM, and then pull out the Serato box on one side, put it in the other, and all of that's happening. I, I didn't know that he was like, "Alright, so we got to switch out." I was like, "Huh? Well, I, I I don't know how to do that. I I I don't know how to do that." So he brings Voodoo Ray up. And he was like, "Yo, just let him rock." Yo, Big Ben is chilling downstairs, hearing me rock. And I'm just like, all right, so now it's 1 o'clock. I'm like, yo, let me really, really warm them up. Now I'm dropping the East Coast bangers, like the 112 and the Black Rock. I'm in my bad boy bag. I'm in I'm in my Mary bag. I'm just dropping the, 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 the just staying in the method, the method and Jada. I'm just rocking out East Coast stuff now. Again, now he's just coming. He's like, all right, yeah, it's time for me to jump on. Yo, after that, I got a call from Big Ben. I started covering his nights there. Like, he was like, it was to the point where I now had an opening DJ. Voodoo was like, you know, you were kind of rusty in the beginning, but you found your groove. Now it was Adrian, 
we're putting you in the downstairs room. You got to get the downstairs room cracking. We got that. We going and then from then once that was cracking, it was switched. Now you're in the upstairs room, and that's how I say voodoo again. My first like, look who came to dance was my thing that me and Ann had. But Voodoo Ray gave me my first, he, he gave me the handout to being in the clubs. And from there, that's how I met the CEOs and the Brown Hornets. And then that's when I started the residency. And that's when you were like, oh, nigga, does you, oh, wait, oh, you pop it. <laughs> I, that's at that point, because I knew, I remember when he was like, CEO was like, Reg West is coming. I was like, Reg West is coming? He was like, yeah, Reg is coming, commission's coming. And that's when he had the influence series. So y'all was already integrated, and I'm like, I'm not like he's like the MOSs are coming. I'm like, but by then I had started my own residency with him, so I was ready. I wasn't cocky, but I was confident. Like I told y'all, I was gonna do this. Some some DJs it was like, yo, don't don't do this dance. Like you stick to dancing. Don't come over here and take food off my plate. They were threatened. Walking in like, oh oh. You know what it is? Let me let me be devil's advocate <clears throat> to it a little bit because because I feel like at that point, like 2010, like a lot of entertainers, dancers, singers, rappers, when yeah. Serato came out, they loved music. So they're like, oh, I'm on a DJ now. And they mm. were taking the big bags from the great DJs. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I'm not gonna say any artist names, but like a, like you know, real rappers and real singers were DJing now, you know what I'm saying? So, and, uh, and uh, an event that 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 might be 10, 10 racks is now taken away from the real DJ and given mm. to the artist because the artist is a better look to have. You dig what I'm saying? So wow. there was some resentment <clears throat> during that point. You dig what I'm saying? So if Yo. you were already doing your thing in a different avenue, a lot of DJs weren't comfortable with giving help or praise to someone who was already established in a different lane of entertainment. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. so that's that makes, that's where it, so that's where it comes from. You, you, you know what I'm saying? It Just makes the same, total the same sense way the, 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 the same sense way now. that that the same way that everybody's a photographer now and the real mm -hmm. photographers are like real photographers are like Dope. Years. come on I, I, and I get it because that's how I felt when people started stepping into the choreography lane. But I got it, it, it pissed me off because I felt like they were taking the easy route and they 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 weren't see the thing with me is when I got in, I refused. I didn't know about Serato, but I refused. I still went and got vinyl, still got a wall of vinyl and a garage full of vinyl because right now you 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 did it correctly. I'm I, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like from a from a from a from a devil's advocate standpoint, yeah. I can understand the pushback. And the resentment because now I got a beef with you as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But yo, since since we talking about it, right? When I when I knew you were real about this DJ life, let me tell you the mm -hmm. point. I knew you were real about this DJ life. I got a call to um to to do to do tour DJ work for Jasmine Sullivan, right? So they were like, "Are you out? Take you right back." Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell the story. Let me tell the story. Yo. So I got I got a call from um my man Kev at the office um like yo Jasmine Sullivan's looking for a DJ this album that she's putting out it's more hip hop you know uh driven it's not gonna be a band um these the rehearsal is gonna be tomorrow um we'll uh we'll we'll link you up with the with with the manager right now and the manager will send you the track so manager sent me the track I'm like all right cool this is dope so I I I, I I, I stayed home that <laughs> night. I, I, I prep. I prep my set. I'm like, okay, I know how to kill this. I I prep. I rehearsed the set for the next day. Went to rehearsal. Bodied it like I knew I would. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I got this guy. I, I got this job. I ain't gonna worry about nobody. <laughs> and as I'm walking out, who walks in? <laughs> DJ Dubs. <laughs> Yo. And I'm like, oh, you're trying out for the position too. I know you're real, but you ain't got this. This is my this is me all the way. <laughs> like but, you ain't in this yo. But but go ahead and audition. I'll see you later, my G. <laughs> uh, and then as yo, I, at out, that point, I knew you was about this in. life. I'm like, oh, he's auditioning for for tour DJ yeah. work now. Oh nah, he about this life now. Let's go. 
So I, yo, I, I was so proud of you. I, no, 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 wait. I was so proud of you. <laughs> I was so proud of you seeing you come in that room because I'm like, yo, he about this life. He like, yo, if we're going to box, we're going to box. What's up? Let's go. <laughs> right? Yo, that was that like, me. And, 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 you know, as as you tell the story, as, as I'm walking out, DJ Active is walking in. Mm. Activists who have been with her forever. And, and and it's crazy now how the paths cross because I've auditioned, like, you know, walking in the rooms and being in, I, you know, I'm walking in the same thing. I auditioned for, for, for Mike Posner and I'm out here with the Felly Fells and just hot off the plane with Will I Am. Choreography, get a call like, yo, you got to come now to SIR right now. Like, da, 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 da. I'm like, I get there, there's Big Boy, there's Felly Fell, there's, you know, the the, the, the LA DJs. And you hit a box, right? Hit a, you hit a box, hit a right? Box, like. <laughs> what we doing? <laughs> but right back to the Jasmine thing, um, that I ended up not being her tour DJ, but ended up being one of her choreographers. So then to get back in the room, they were like, didn't you didn't you audition for and this is when i and this is when I, I i saw i saw your game step up because i think it was maybe if not that year maybe a couple of years later i see you on tour with ariana grande djing <laughs> i'm like this is my guy see, <laughs> see listen listen everybody can't be my tyson some people are gonna be floyd right mm -hmm. like like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hit you in the, with, with a first round knockout, but I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna keep it for 12 rounds and I'm gonna mm -hmm. find I'm gonna find my way, my way my to, way. to, to yes. battle, right? Mm -hmm. So your way of battling is you're gonna slide in on the choreography side because that's your lane, mm -hmm. and you can and you're gonna be the DJ because you can DJ. I was like, I don't know, I don't know who I don't <laughs> know who so gave you the conversation or if you, or, or if you thought about it yourself. To sell yourself as that package, but I was like, "That's the smart man play." So let me let me give you let me give you the chess play, um, and it didn't even boil down to that until after 2010. I quit dance. Mm. I tell you, actually, so wait, 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 wait before you start the story. So when we, when you call me about DJing and I asked you if you're still gonna dance, would you would you give me the 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 the, the, the dance on it, or you were really? Like so, gonna continue let, to dance. Let me, let me, let me, let me actually clarify. Two thousand eight was my last tour as a dancer. I was on the Keisha Cole tour. Um, I did a little assistant choreography there, but I was already choreographing, and I knew at that time and point the way I was getting treated by management and artists and what dancers were getting paid. I was like, this shit's for the birds. I'm tired of this. Excuse me. I'm tired of this. I wanted to step foot in the choreography. I was back in LA, called for team. I'm like, yo, I'm not dancing anymore. I just want to be behind the camera. She was like, okay, well, you know. Um, she brought me on as I was already assisting her, but then she brought me on full time for Tima Robinson. Love her. Love, love, love. <clears throat> Takes care of me in so many ways. Um and even then I left dance because I was upset that too many choreographers and dancers were trying to come in the way they were and not respecting it. And, and then the way it was being received in the commercial industry and what television was putting the, the, the spin on it. I was like, you're totally, you know, back then I, I got ridiculed for doing it this way. And now it's, it's, it's cool to, to, to undermine it and, <clears throat> and, and water it down and it'd be on national TV. And I'm like, I didn't work as hard as a dancer to get here. And, uh, I I wanted to okay now I'm a choreographer I want to change that aspect and you know my heart for about two years was just like nah I just is, I really I I didn't I wanted to run my own business so we were running who came to dance me and Ab told you about the 2010 when I called at that time and point I was done with dance I was like mm -hmm. I want to be a DJ why i wanted people to feel the way i felt when they heard music on so like i wanted to i wanted to be the ox chord then and just everybody enjoy the feeling that i got when i heard djs and what made me dance i was like i wanted to give back i wanted to educate more i wanted to look down and be like 
that's I wanted to see what I I saw like being in control. That was my form of being an artist. I'm not saying I want what artists have, but I knew what I wanted to express at that time. At that time, I was full. I turned down a tour. The only reason it became integrated was 2012. Um, get called a choreographer tour, and I was like, at this time, for team, we're doing the biggest artist in London at this time, Cheryl Cole, who's under Will I Am. So mm-hmm. second came out of a girl group, it's the biggest thing out there. We were doing her X Factor performances. She wanted the 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 she wanted the like the New York LA dance flavor she had Fatima. I was on her side. We choreographed this X Factor performance. She brought us on to do a tour with somebody else. And she was like, I want you to dance for me. And I was like, I don't dance anymore. I just choreograph and I DJ. She was like, it was my last tour. And I was like, no, nope. nope. I don't want to go on tour no more. I was like, only way I'm touring is if I'm touring as a DJ. Straight up. I was like, only way you can get me to dance for you is if you put a, a DJ DJ section in your show. <clears throat> Two weeks go by. Uh, stage gets shipped over overseas. Now I'm meeting with Keith Harris, who's my, my DJ agent now. Music producer. Musical director, we can go down his his flowers and receipts later. But you know, now meeting him in this light as musical director in the time he did all the Black Eyed Peak stuff. He's over here with her. I get over there. We're going through like the program. Like, all right, Act One, Act Two, Act Three. And Cheryl sitting there, like, pop over my shoulder, like, and I'm like. <laughs> <clears throat> Intermission DJ does break act four close show. I was like, <laughs> Intermission DJ does break. She looks over and she says, Now you have to dance for me. <laughs> Bow. <laughs> and I was like, And then it clicked. I was like, Oh, I mean, she, she, she I, I was like, So wait, what, what, what is this break? She was like, I have to get changed. And there's a 10 minute break in the show, so we're giving it to you. I said, wait, wait, come again. And she said, do your DJ. She says, you wanted to tour as a DJ. Here you go. Fatima co-signed on it. My best friend was dating her at the time, co-signed on it. The music director co-signed on it. It was like, yo, this is a great idea. And I was like, but I have to learn the show now. Like I have three weeks to learn four acts. And that's when it clicked at that time. Two years later, it clicked like, oh, you can you can create your own lane with this. You don't have, you can do either or now. I was like, I probably never want to dance, but being able to choreograph, kick back, and then now control the music. And that's when my production mind started. The, the, the mind of my creative direction started to kick in. And like, you can be a package for everyone not be underpaid, but like here, because you got to pay somebody else to do it anyway. Right. So right. I started going, oh, I can package this together. Best dance. I'm dancing DJ. Like, what? Oh, wait, I can choreograph your show. You don't have a music and I can control it. I know I know the flow of it now. So I can right. map the music out. And it's, it's a full package that gives the audience the entertainment package. Bro, I did these 12 shows overseas, catapulted my career as a DJ. Because now people saw me as DJ Dubs was dancing for Cheryl Cole. He mm-hmm. also was one of the choreographers. Oh, wow. She put me on the map. Club dates. Now I'm touring. I'm touring clubs overseas before I'm even doing it in New York. That's how it happens. I took a page out of all my... The Reg book the four five. What's the next club? Cool. Yo, I'm coming there with Cheryl Cole. Do, 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 the after party. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Go get your bag, young man. Go get your bag. Go get the outside bag. <laughs> Met all the promoters out there. Why? Because when I left that, I wanted to come back and do it. Just like how y'all were doing it. Right? <laughs> but Smart then I man. didn't want to go back as a choreographer. I wanted to go back and tour the deep. I'm like, and here I'm going, yo. By this time, I kid you not, I've never, 
to this day, I will tell you to this day, to this day, it's still on my bucket list. I have never danced and choreographed for a major artist as a headlining dancer and choreographer. To this day, I have not. To this day, my 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 20, 20, 25 years in this industry, still as a choreographer, I have not toured, danced, or choreographed for a headlining artist. Two years after I planned to become a DJ, I am dancing, choreographing, dance captain, and DJ for an international worldwide artist. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get and there. And I was just like, no, nah, that's not this was Cheryl Cole at the time. That was my opening. Came back, did the Will I Am tour, landed, got the call about uh undisclosed artists, which I thought was mm -hmm. J Lo, ended up being Mike Posner, Bieber Tour. Oh, so wait, you on the you on the Bieber tour with, with Mike Posner? That I didn't I was know. On the Bieber tour. Yes, uh, that's that's where that's where Scooter saw me. Uh, but ah. again, now it's about relationships. People respected me as a choreographer, respected what I've, I'm now doing as a DJ, understood that I wasn't just saying, oh, I'm DJ. Like I really, I'm on tour. I'm overseas in the clubs. I've started managing myself and making this lane. So when I, when they saw when they heard DJ Dubs, they was like, "Oh yeah, Dubs is a real DJ." At this point, I done toured with Cheryl Cole, Mike Posner on the Bieber tour, and Kesha. They were like, "Yo." So when it rolled around to Ariana looking for a DJ, the choreographers that I trained as dancers and creative directors now that used to take my class are in these choreography positions, which mm. also respected me as a choreographer and now respected me as a DJ. So when their artists started looking for DJs, they didn't trust anybody else but someone that was familiar with both. And that's how we got to Ariana Grande. Yo, and that <laughs> is how you find that. And, no, but see, this, listen, this this is how you find your lane, right? Because let's, let's take it back mm -hmm. to, to our conversation and what I told you. It's gonna be hard work, right? It's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> Five years later, I was like, "Yeah." You, but you, you but you to, figured it out. Figured it out, and I, I tell people when people are like, "Oh, can you?" I want to be a DJ. Da, 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 da. I said, "You have to know what lane you want at this point, because I'm not in the same lane as every other DJ. I may have grinded like them, but I knew my lane was going to be different." In That's the because your talents are different, right? You, you, like yes. you have a, you have a special set of skills, right? Like yes. there's some DJs who are who are amazing on the on the turntable side. Turn I will never be that. I'm not. And I, I'm want, never and I wanted to, to. Like I got to LA and I was like, yo, I'm about to go on tour with these DJs. I need to. I need to have the hands ready. Like if they ask me to do what I do, I'm like, my skill set wasn't being a turntablist. I was out here taking. I flew when I when I got to LA. First thing I did was I found I was looking for DJ classes one on one because I'm like I have to perfect my turntable listen like I needed to but understand But listen you you have to be proficient you don't have to be you don't have to be a uh, uh, black belt level but you have to be proficient right like cuz if you show on your hands on camera you got to be proficient so you got to so know I think I think you got to a space where you were proficient enough to mm -hmm. utilize all your other skills and, and that, take you to that, right. That was that 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 was my hands. That was my baby scratch. That was my transformer. That was my that was my DJing fundamental saying, what will I pair with this that showcases my DJs and entertainer? And what I had to go back on it was my first love. I'm like, oh cool. Ain't nobody leaving the booth and coming back to it and dancing and they going show they're going to show being a creative director they're going to they're going to, sh they're going to be able to showcase if you see here's your 10 minutes a word i'm not going to do it like i'm not i'm not about to, i don't <laughs> got all that but i'm gonna show you what i got right right that solidified right. it and that's what every artist that pulled me on loved especially ari now. she was like and then made me her no, okay. co-musical director on the show like mm. I went from three days in the rehearsal 
dubs. I, we wanted a DJ because I wanted to be able to, I want to, and I didn't want to step on the music. Now, here I am, business out again. Like, yo, Adrian, we heard your remix. Da, 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 cool. We want you to add that, that, we want you to add the culture to it. Basically saying, we want the blackness. She was crossing mm. over the trap side. You see where her music was. After her right. first album, she was like, I know where I want to go. I want, so it was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I could do that. I'm not touching shit. I'm not, one, I'm not getting paid for it. Right. Two, I'm not the musical director. You don't tell me this, but she's telling me this personally and directly. And I'm just like, so one day management was like, yo, um, I third day in, I thought I got fired. Adrian, you're not going to rehearsal today. Oh shit. Meet us at this address. I thought she called me to her house to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> take take it back to Jerome days, right? Take it right it's back. Like, all I saw was <laughs> I'm about to go to this house. And be paired up with another DJ or somebody. <laughs> and battle. Shit. <laughs> battle, for real. Now, I was under the wraps about it, getting a call for it for a while. Like, I remember when Scooter called my agent looking for somebody. He was like, yeah, there was, there was a did it. They didn't know that he asked for me through them. Then the choreographer went and told back Brian and stopped the choreographer. Oh, yeah, no, no, I found a DJ. I found a DJ already. And then they called me. They was like, yeah, well, we found a DJ. We found a DJ, too. And he was like, all right, cool. Have them come to rehearsal. They both call me. I'm the person that shows up. <laughs> my rehearsal, like, phone call, like, yo, you didn't get a call? I'm in New York. I just had my son two months later. Like, um, you didn't get a call? No, rehearsal started in two days. Wait, what? Yeah, we start in January 4th, 2015. Ari tour. Like, you didn't get a call about it? I'm like, yo, I didn't hear nothing. It's January. It's January 2nd. I'm like, am I, am I booked? Like, yeah, Scooter's been looking for you. We, we thought you got it. I was like, no one called me on the phone. I don't move without my agent. Yo, this time I didn't have a DJ agent. Here's what it is. They want me for the tour. Figure out the rate. Cool. All right. Is it legit? Yeah, it's legit. Adrian, you start in two days. Bags pack on the third. Land on the third. In rehearsal the fourth. I'm meeting the entire band dancers ariana and i'm the new person walking in like so the band was put together by the musical director not a dj is an outside source and yep. i was just like so now i didn't i was like all right let me let me just i got hired to, i'm just hear what they need so on and so forth um, now were you just, triggering any music or or, or was it being triggered everything from everything's in pro tools so now the band's been rehearsing the music and so on and so forth and they're like, all right, well, we don't have an intro. We don't have this and that. And they was just like, just do what you do. And I'm like, I don't know. There's so certain songs that were like, boom, boom, been to the room. I had trigger sample. I would be like, hey, and I just time it and just, um, tick, 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 tick. just know what I did. Just play in, play out. Nothing on the mic yet. Aria comes in. She's like, that sounds great. Dubs, I'm going to need this from you. Did it. So she kept treating me like my separate entity, like, Dub, so I want you to do this and want you to do that and this and that and that. You're the this and that. And I'm just like, okay. And I'm feeling a little insecure because I'm just like, I'm not trying to get fired. I don't want to step like Troy Loretta, great God. It's the music director, brought everybody else in. String players, guitar, bass, drummer, keys. And I'm just like, you want me to do that? And certain things she would say, I'm like, that's kind of overstepping she's like i want you to start the second song and i was like and you just put me in a bad place i'm still resilient right. three days later i get the call like we are and i you know i was very vocal about like yo i love what you guys do. so you guys want me to co-musical direct that's what you want like right. yes we want you to come up with the intro the the breaks in this and amplify this and so on and so forth and i said y'all need to have this talk with troy first right talk to the musical director and then now we got to talk different numbers because now I'm co music director and DJ and MC. Now we got to talk different numbers. And I'm like, if you're giving DJ Dubs his freedom, this is what I do in my shows. Now, now, when, <laughs> when, when, when it comes to number talk, how do you handle it? Is, is it, is it a, you you're calling your agent? Like, yo, look, I need you to call whoever, whoever they want me to do yep. more stuff and, and, and they take care of it. You ain't got to worry about nothing. Yep. Hey, Adrian, da, 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 da. how much more would you like? Cool, cool. Can we start here? Yep, cool. Send the numbers off. They say no, they say no. They say yes, they say yes. You say no, you get less. You say yes, you get more. That's it. Same agent. 
block agency at the time was just my, they were my choreography, but they're the only people, I don't want to do paperwork. I don't want when it comes to like, not I don't want to, I'm very aware of it, but I want to worry about what I have to worry about. They have it the lawyers, they have the people, they have the, they're, they've seen the contracts. They Nothing other than that changes. They're going to get the percentage. I want somebody to make sure my checks are coming in. I don't want to have to fight. Like, all right, we booked on this gig. Yo, where's my money? Do do you find it easier to to get along with 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 the team ha- having that go between? Because yes, for a majority, I I and I I knew you were going to say yeah. I only asked that because for the majority of my career, my touring career, mm-hmm. I was A to B. Oh, what you want? How much? I right, we t- you talking to me? What we doing? And I was having those not uncomfortable for me, but I was having those conversations. What are we doing? Okay, cool. Yeah, and or wait, you call me a day before? Nah, it's gonna cost you this. So I I I commend you for having the go between because it it lessens the friction that might happen. You know what I'm saying? So I started looking at it this way, and you know, I when I the reason why I threw it, I threw that bag that way is because I knew as DJs, excuse me. I knew as DJs and music producers, and that was what I wanted to start in the future when I got into the DJ lane. I was like, yo, there's no one that protects DJs. There's no one that protects musicians. There's no one that represents them. Why don't they get the same representation as we do as choreographers? And And I was like, when I make it, I'm starting a music agency. I wanna be able to bring these people on and be like, so that was that was I knew you guys were having those conversations. I know how uncomfortable it can be because I've had those as a dancer and choreographer, and I was like, you know what? It takes you get looked at differently, especially as a black person. You know, especially we always needed someone to be our voice. You know, it was, it was and I felt you gained more respect. I'm like, well, if the artist got somebody to talk to them and to create their numbers and the people to do it, why can't I? I don't want. I want to be able to come do what I'm my art like they are they don't want to sit there and have to worry about that because that play the stress plays on the different performance and so on and so forth so at that sure. time you know i grew comfortable in saying yo speak to my agent and if i didn't get it i would say it's not for me go get somebody else at that point uh yo you call me the day before it's gonna cost you this much because i now have to do more work right to make you look good not, not right. even for me but right. in, the mo- in the moment, it's so I'm like, yo, I gotta, I have to do this for me because y'all still gotta look good. And it's only gonna fall back on why they look so good. Oh, because of him. Oh. So yeah, if I gotta do more work. But it was also, they, 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 they didn't argue the numbers because again, they know I came from a choreography side. So they respected everything I did. Even the choreographers, Brian Scott, the creative director, Nick DeMora, they knew, they would ask my input. Now you're asking my input, taking myself out as the DJ, looking help. Like we're we're, we're in the same choreography. And what do you think about? It? I would not, Adrian. What do you think about this? This is a guy I did this, which a was able to help me pitch certain ideas that management started to laugh at. That's why I had a tap solo. I was mm. like, we're, tra- we're transitioning into 1980s. We're under this, you know, the Troy created. I was like, what if I went out there and tap? Let's, 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 let's like, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna look like we're in the 1960s. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're touching. Let's let the setup begin. You ask Dusty do his thing. This is my idea. Why? Because if this is my tour. That's what I would have done. That's facts. You ask for an intro. You ask for how to bring this song in. You wanted a breakdown. You wanted this. And I'm like, okay, now that the talk happened where I'm music production, this is where I'm, now I'm just like, now I got to open up Ableton. I got to produce and make stems. And that's when the production side of me stepped in. And I was like, funnel this to that, add this. And, and that, it re- I, 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 I re- you know, I said, if there was anything I regret in life, and I was like, damn, I should have kept playing the piano when I was five <laughs> and, six, and seven. You overthinking shit now. Come on, son. I was like, yeah. I'm producing. I'm like, I can't play these keys. I, I know what I want to hear. But Troy, we need did it. He's like, and Adrian, we need did it. This, and then it became a collaborative thing, and that's what made the honeymoon tour, you know, spectacular. Even down to her allowing my freedom, I knew she gravitated to me because my ad libs and the things I would say, she would start stealing and opening the show with it. 
with me. And I'm like, that's my line. Let me get that hand clap. That's that's my line. To the, where the fans started like making t-shirts and like, DJ Dubs, let me get that hand clap. It became, it became familiar to them. It became part of their world with the pop star. And that's when, you know, when she started like, DJ Dubs, it, give it up for my band. Now give it up for Mr. DJ Dubs. I was like, she respect, she and everybody respects me on that level of why I am not branded with a band. I am my own entity. And at that point, the combination of everything where you were like, well, how did you know at that point you really wanted to do it? That cycle of an eight month tour showed me that as a brand, as a choreographer, DJ and creative director and dancer go hand in hand. And this is your lane. And ain't nobody else, and no DJ right now. There is not one and the only, only person that can do that after is another dancing DJ. And they would have studied who? Me. The same way I studied the DJs and I found my lane, they would have studied this and had to create their lane. That's how it is, baby. <laughs> Yo, that, that Ari story is crazy, dog. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, um, can, can you tell the people <laughs> the other big ticket client that, that you picked up? My friend, I'll tell it for you. J-Lo. Yo, oh! tell the people about J-Lo, <laughs> Tell the people about Jello. Yo, crazy, similar story. I was working on, not to just burst a bubble, I was working on the Whitney Houston hologram at the time, which ended up touring. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? I, 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 didn't pro, I didn't promote that much as much too because we wanted to, to build more steam. And it did, it did great steam overseas and it was supposed to pop off right before COVID hit, so. I didn't really get so you were choreographing, set. you were you were co-choreographing the Whitney Houston hologram tour thing thing. Yeah, the and evening <laughs> with Whitney. Yo, I, I, I saw that come up on my Instagram story. I'm like, this is gonna be interesting, and and I didn't see anything attached to you, so that's why I never hit you, and that's why my face looked like what it would have just looked like. Yeah, but the final product was amazing. They toured for three months. I was in right before COVID hit. I was overseas. Um, the, the you were with was them. Oh, overseas. Okay. Yeah, we started overseas first because it was supposed to start in Rock and Rio, um, but we started overseas, and you know, critics hit it a little hard the first time. But when people warmed up to it, understood that you have to accept it. It is a hologram, and she she looked like Whitney, sounded like Whitney when she could, and you know, like she, we did the best that we could to pay homage. So, okay. Uh, I was working on that project prior to that. It's a very long process. Um, got a call. J-Lo's looking for remixes. I was like, I'm not sending remixes. No, nope. Ain't nobody going to take my remixes in. Uh, J-Lo's looking for a DJ. What? When's her tour? You know, Adrian, come down and audition. Nah, I'm good. You know, it's J-Lo. Turn down J-Lo. For, like, Why? Why would you turn down J-Lo? Because in my head at the time, I'm like, She's been in Vegas. I'm like, she hasn't put out an album in, like, what is she touring? What music is she touring? Why is she touring? How is J-Lo going on tour? You know, like the, and I'm like, she, she has a band. I'm like, yo, in her Vegas show, she had Kid Capri. Like, she's looking for DJs? This is J-Lo we're talking about. She can call Flex, call Clue, call Capri, call. She can call, she can call DJs. Like she got her Bronx DJs. Like she don't need me. Like she's still looking for DJs. I mean, I thought y'all were looking for remixes. Nah, I'm sorry, guys. I can't come down at that time. I was in a lockout from eight to eight. Yo, tomorrow, Adrian, can you make NBC Studios? I'm like, fine. Fuck. F it. Cool. What do I need to bring? I got a call from Kimber's. Like, all right, Adrian. You know, we've been talking about our worlds need to align at this point i'm like this is the time she's like yes i'm working on j-lo i want you to come in and do your thing okay fine here i go here i come <laughs> okay do you guys have equipment yeah we have cdj did it all right cool um you know what i don't need to do this i'm bringing my equipment because now i need to feel as comfortable as possible if you want me to do my thing i get down to the studio the stage is built. They've been in rehearsals for two months already. Mm -hmm. 
All right, here's the script. Do, 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 do. Adrian, what you're trying to do, 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 do. Mind you, the other DJ's there. I didn't even know the what DJ. other DJ. What do you mean? The DJ that they've been rehearsing with for two weeks have already been there. Oh, and things weren't work. Oh, okay, so 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 let's 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 get clear then. So they had somebody already on on set that was that was DJing, and it wasn't working out. So they wanted to swap out and use you. Two weeks, two weeks later, they're auditioning DJs while he's been in rehearsal. Two weeks tours in four days. <laughs> okay. Tours in four days, my dude. All right, here I come. I didn't know the DJ was there. I need to move this out of here. I'm moving niggas' equipment and stuff. Boom, 1200s. Yep. Boom, 62. Boom, Serrano, laptop. Do, 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 do. Can I get a mic? Yeah, my ear is cool. What do I got to do? Here's the start of the show. We kind of want you to be like, all right, so now did it, did it come to the front stage? I was like, oh, you want me to leave my booth? She never told me that. One thing you don't do, you don't allow me to leave my booth because that is already who I am. Yeah, we want you to start the show. Here's what's happening. Da -da -da -da. Lights up. Lights. Word. Script. Da -da 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 -da. I'm going to do it like this. And they kind of like dance. I'm throwing windows. I'm flares. And like running to the other side. Of the Everybody get your hands up. So now I run back. I'm like, yo, it's time to party. Yo, LA, are you ready? Da -da 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 -da. Boom, 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 boom. I'm dropping. Boom, boom, boom. I'm dropping Snoop records. I'm dropping Exhibit records. I'm dropping Kendrick records. I'm just like off the top because they were like, and I leave here and just warm the crowd up. Just started going in my West Coast bag and just dropping like chorus here. And they hit you with another one. Like, bam, bam, bam. Rocking. Like, everybody around is like, now, mind you, I get there. I'm now seeing familiar faces. I'm seeing the Pro Tools guy I know. I'm seeing the dancers they know. Now everybody's coming out that like that sounds like dubs. I'm coming out, they're like, yo, it's dubs. Mind you, J Lo's not there. They're just filming me. The choreographers are getting to choreographers and creative directors I know. Nappy tabs. Boom. Long story short. Can you come tomorrow when J Lo's here? All right, cool. Other DJ still there, like sitting behind. All right, we're gonna run. Yo, this two business is so dirty, fam. This business is so dirty. Your man is still there. I don't oh, know. that's so dirty. They call me in to rehearse the show. Rehearse the show with J Lo and the band and everything that's been happening for the months of rehearsal. All right, Adrian, do your intro. Da -da 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 -da. She watches, has her. Uh, understudy da -da 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 -da, comes to the cool. All right, there was like another section, a funk section that I didn't get to. Like, they had a whole script. I was like, they gave me the script. I was like, I don't, I'm not. I said, if you want me to do my thing, I went home, recreated a new script, mm -hmm. came back, was like, this is how I flow. And I'm like, we want the banter with JLo. I'm like, whatever she feeds me, I'm gonna second rehearsal. No, I did that. I didn't go home. Sorry. They gave me the script to go home. I didn't rehearse it. They told me about it the next day. There was a break in between, like an hour lunch break. I read the script, did it, did it retyped it, and said it, printed it out, and said, "This is the script I'm gonna use." And they were like, "So she ran the show." She was like, "All right." We ran it again. End of that. They was like, "Adrian, we'll see you tomorrow for rehearsal." Day three. Benny's gonna be here. I'm like, yo, do I have the job yet? No, I'm like, I'm in rehearsals right now. Now I'm tell in, people who hey. Benny is. You, you're being too cool. Who's Benny? Tell, we tell about people. The Benny is. Medina. The <laughs> Mariah Carey. J Lo. Like, even Usher. Like, the Benny Medina. Like, managers of, man, like, he's the Scooter Braun of back then. <laughs> That's the best way for me to. He's the Diddy. Like, he, he gets his receipts and flowers of, of you know, he is he is why J Lo is who J Lo is. Put it that way. Um, yeah, we want to do this rehearsal tomorrow. Benny, lights, cameras. Da, 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 da. Wait, what? I'm actually I'm asking questions now. Like, you know, am I booked or not? Because now I'm in eight to twelve hour rehearsals. I done ran mm -hmm. the show three times yesterday. You want me to come to do a show run tomorrow? And they're like, yeah, press is coming. We got a couple TikTok to this. So as soon as we walk in, I'm like, guys, before we move forward. 
what's my role? And my book is like, oh yeah, Adrian, your book. Cool, y'all need to call my agent. But that's just, and then also, Adrian, we're gonna need you. There's, so now the World of Dance is incorporated into this, and now you need to do your show. You need to run the World of Dance show. You need to open JLo show and perform with JLo. That's how it happened. I was like, when is this? Oh, tour starts is a uh, first show is Friday, two shows is Saturday. Uh, uh, the forum. Tour life is so crazy, ain't it, Doug? Damn, it's it. so crazy. Yo, now, especially with get, these bigger I got, artists. <laughs> I gotta give you this too. Both of them after rehearsals, they was, they was like, oh, so what do you think about J uh, DJ? J Lo? He's cool. He all right. He, mm -hmm. Hit me with yeah. that. I was like, I was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah she was like, What's up? Cool. Benny was Benny was like, Benny was like, oh, he, he kind of needs some work. You just she was like, you know what? Just don't step on my toe tomorrow. I was like, all right, cool. I said, yeah. I'm gonna do it. I said, I'm gonna do what I do. She was like, looked at me like, I was like, and I said, I said, oh yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm gonna do what I do. She was like, oh, from the East Coast? I was like, yeah. BX, right? Conversation we had right before she got on stage. She was like, cool. See you tomorrow. Had two days off, first show day. First show day. Yo, Dubs. Yo, what up, Lo? Right off the bat. Three shows in. I want to speak to Dubs. I like when you say this. this throw this at me. Da -da 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 -da. Keep it up, babe. I love you. Me and J-Lo got a tour bond. I don't even want to say we had a cool bond, but at that point, she respected everything I did. From the opening, she heard the hits and everything. She was like, that's my DJ. A-Rod to the so, point was so like, he's phenomenal. Not knowing when he tells the story at the end, he was like, yo, babes, I need a DJ. And then she was like, we got DJ Dubs. And he was like, I went and found out who DJ Dubs was. And he was like, I love DJ Dubs. I have, I have that video. I'm probably shooting it to you when he's talking about like, how passionate she was about having this DJ. And I had no knowledge. And he was like, Dubs, you you came in here and you you set a whole different present. He was like, all the other DJs they have, we've been rehearsing, we've been auditioning DJs since January. I was like, wait, what? Get on the phone with all my East East Coast and West Coast friends. I just had sent in videos. DJ Kula, everyone sent in videos. The ones that heard about it, I was like, oh, word? They were just like, yo, we were so happy that you got it. Every single DJ I know out here was like, oh, bro, you got it? Yo, that's, that's, for, for months, I didn't even know this was going on. That's the J-Lo story. But yo, so, so just to pinpoint back a second where she said, don't step on my toes. Do you feel like when you, when you didn't back down per se, you got the respect from her? Like yep. on some, don't step on my toes. What? Yo, I'm gonna do what I do. I got you. Like, yo, yep. don't talk to me crazy. I know what I'm doing out here. J Lo's been known for people, you know, and I'm I'm not saying to bite myself in the ass, but she is a superstar. Like she's Facts. not even she is she's an icon. Facts. I used to be one of those people that be like, it's J Lo. Not because I work with her, I've seen her work ethic. She is who she is because she's an icon. Facts. Give her everything she needs. She is on that pedestal as a businesswoman, as a mom, as every icon. I don't, those don't get handed out easily. She's an icon, legendary icon, deserves every, cares about her, her, her sex life or whatever. She's a goddamn icon. Why? Because she's a boss. And some people are afraid. I've heard that, oh, you know, you got to watch. We hear that about artists. Oh, you, you. The, you got to be a yes person. I've never been a yes person. The shit works, it works. If it's whack, it's whack. If it's dope, it's dope. I don't have anything to hide. And I don't have anything to fear because you ask for me. So you're going to get me. No, um, don't, you ain't got to worry about that. I'm going to do what I do. You ask me to do what I do. I know what I'm going to do is going to make your show better. Within a second. I'm not going to try to be better than you because there's nothing I can do to be better than they bought tickets to see J-Lo. So I'm not trying to be in front of J-Lo. I'm just trying to be one with J-Lo. So they respect me. So the artists, the, 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 the fans watching be like, we love their connection. They're amazing together. 
I like him as a DJ. You know what I'm saying? I was getting flack with Ariana at one point. The dance was like, you're ruining her music and this and that. And then I'm like, if you took that to heart, if I took it to heart and didn't do what I did then, then I wouldn't mm-hmm. have been with the artist. I wouldn't have been hired for the artist that I was hired. Same thing with Fergie, which, you know, I did a two year tour with her and toured Brazil and all that because. Yo, I forgot you DJ for Fergie. No. Yo, and was let me her pause you. Musical director. Yeah. Let me pause <laughs> you right there. Yo, yo. <laughs> me and you had a show with, when we, when we was working with JoJo, we had a show in LA <laughs> and. It was a big show, like Snoop and Pharrell and the Black Eyed Peas. And, yo, I, I tapped you on your shoulder like after we finished our performance. I'm like, yo, I'm going to go do some networking. You coming? He was like, yep. yep. And we walked out <laughs> the dressing room. <laughs> yep. We walked out that dressing room. Oh, yo, there goes Snoop. Take a picture, flick. Yo, that's Fergie over there. Yo, let's go take a group picture with Fergie. Talk to Fergie for a second. All right, let's go do it. Da, 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 da. Yo, I, yo, I got to find that picture. I'm going to B-roll that picture right here. <laughs> <laughs> but of yo, us networking. with Fergie back in the day. Yo, yo, because that, that's, that, that's what I, I loved about you so much back then. It was like, yo, we moving? We moving. Let's go. What we doing? <laughs> yo, and that's why I, I just, you know, that's why I'm where I'm at now. Like uh, the networking, the, the relationships. I was respected by Tabitha Napoleon as a choreographer, as a DJ, as a dancer. And they would have never trusted me the way they trusted me with that show. They found the perfect balance. I didn't speak Spanish. They wanted somebody that spoke Spanish. I didn't speak Spanish, but they got everything else. They were like, oh, we trust Dub. Oh, Dub's the DJ? Say no more. Because now they know what criteria I come from, you know? Speaking of where you come from, bro, we 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 skipped over some some gems of your career. You were in some legendary films back in the day, dog. <laughs> can you tell these people? Can you tell these Ooh. people the films, the dance films you were in back in the day? Because we might have to have to freeze frame your shots in these in these in these feature films back in the day. Tell the no, people, dog. So I was in Honey. <laughs> I was in Dream Girls. Yep. I was in Stomp the Yard one and two. I was in This is the End also. Um I missed the I missed the You Got Serve train, but it's all good. And recently, no man, let me just let me just let me just just drop bomb on them. I mean coming to America too, baby. Bum, bum, <laughs> coming to America. And- <laughs> and that's and that's where we're going right now. Um, you uh were co choreographer, co yeah, co so uh, co choreographer. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Robinson go ahead. was the choreographer of the 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 movie. Um, you know, she respects me well enough to call me. You know, her uh, assistant choreographer, associate choreographer, associate. Producer. I'm basically one of her, you know, creative assistants and. Like you're, you're, you're one of her go-to people. You're I one of her the, go-to people when, when she gets I'm, a call. I'm the only person. <laughs> like I'm her right hand, like right now. You know, I'll drop a gem because it's out right now. Um, Space Jam Two comes out July 16th, and we did that one together. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can say that now because it's you know I'm seeing the premieres and. LeBron said it's coming out the 16th. So yes, now I can say, you know, you get it first. In, you got it. You are got are it you in Space I'm, Jam too, or, or did you choreograph? I'm, I'm, I choreographed that one as well too. So did it's you, another did sequel. You, did, 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 did you choreograph some Bugs Money moves I in did. the joint? What's going on? Now that I won't tell you what I choreographed. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to figure that out. But uh, okay. yeah, let's not let's not get too far. I, um, did they put you in the green suit? No. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was in I was in one of those suits like this this is crazy. <laughs> Trying, you know, coming That's up dope. with certain moves um for, for certain things. But for coming to America, you know, we were in the process of shooting American Soul, which is the story of the Don Don Cornelius, um, yes. which is the story of Soul Train and we need to talk about of, that too. Please, please don't 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 just don't just no, slide over it's that. Gonna, it's gonna happen at the same time now. Do it. <laughs> 
we were shooting both in Atlanta. We shot the first series the year before. Of course, Fatima got the call as being one of the producers. So she brought me on as choreographer. Uh, we shot the first season. It went, it went off great. Now we're shooting. We shot in Atlanta. Um, 2018 was the first season. Uh, and then 2019, after I finished the J-Lo tour, I was like, okay, I'm out tour. I'm doing a couple things here and there. We got another call, season two. And she said, this one's going to be interesting. I'm like, why? Because she was like, boom, script. We got to figure out coming to America at the same time. And I was like, wow. oh, shoot. And they wanted a local choreographer for her. They didn't want, you know, time. They're like, yo, the budget, we can't. Fly somebody Fatima, in a hotel. So luckily, I was already working on American Soul. So technically, I'm a local. Um, mm. They never worry about putting me up until it. She's like, we're going to have to work it out. I was about to put myself in the African scene. <laughs> when I saw, when we called in my homegirl, Kara Mack, who is, does all the African, you know, authentic African work, I was like, yeah, my bones can't handle that no more. I don't think I'm doing that. <laughs> and then there were certain scenes that was very strategic because it was like, I really want to be a part of the movie, but I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to because I had so much American soul work. We shot that for three months, you know, like mm. we're shooting 12 episodes and it got truncated to 10 in a, in from, I was off tour in August, September, October, November while shooting coming to America, which they already been shooting, but now we're shooting that September, October, November. And it's like, wow, she's got to be there and I got to be here. So it's like, we got to figure it out. So I'm like, Dag, I can't be an Izzy soldier because if you were a soldier, you have to be in every single soldier scene, including the extras, because that was mm. such a big part of Wesley's thing. So we're like, maybe the the funeral. And and I looked at, we looked at the schedule and a couple of days overlap, but they were they were days where, you know, I could have gotten away with it. And then I literally, I will never forget, I had like 16 hour days, 18 hour days. I would, so it just so happened, God worked it out where the funeral shoot became a night shoot. Mm. So everything, and now the other thing about production is if you start Monday at like seven, you get 12 hour days. So they can go seven to seven or eight. So every day it'll go a little later and a later. So by the time you get to Friday, you're in a night shoot. Yep. <clears throat> so, Call times were getting pushed, and I was just like, "Yo, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it." I rehearsed it, and I'm like, "Maybe they won't catch me." So, it just worked out perfectly. Where I rapped, got there, thirty minutes, thirty minute drive, Tyler Perry Studios, and they were like, "Mind you, people been there all day," and they're like, "All right, cool, we're bringing in the dancers for so and so," and I'm like, now dressed and then jumping into the scene, like, and then shooting that for another six to eight hours, like. I couldn't believe so you, 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 it. You, what, what, kind of, what kind of Red Bull drink did you drink that day? <laughs> ah, I was working on adrenaline. Like, that was the machine in me at the time. So, mind you, and I put myself in American Soul the second season. So, there were certain days that, which, you know, helping out other dancers that were soldiers, I'm like, yo, I'm going to make myself a swing. So, when they got to go to coming to America, if I'm a swing, I could jump in, get that residual. Oh, chair. I got you. So, so, so you had people on both sets. I got both you. dancers in American Soul because Atlanta was limited, but we like using our uh, our select amount of people. So now this the, both that was that was everything was shot pre COVID, right? Uh, American Soul and 2019 and pre COVID. Yep. Got you. Right, right, right. So, so, so it, it wasn't that much of a we got to do testing and all the other stuff that's going on right now. I got you. We were, we were, we were literally free. We were free, baby. Free as a bird. <laughs> we're flying. Yeah. Um, had our wings. Uh, everything's pre COVID. So, you know, we worked out having to do it. I had a, an amazing amount of people for team that trusted me in some ways and gave me freedom to do what I do. Even like if I wasn't, choreographing like I didn't choreograph a lot of the African stuff or I, I put in like what it felt like because I took African but you know I've, I've left that I turned that chapter and closed that book a long time ago but I knew visually what certain things should look like and we all collaborated on it together to bring the vision and you know I wish we would have had more dance and a little more dance we could have used five minutes 
you know, gave every scene an extra two minutes. It wouldn't have hurt them. But enough was it, enough was showcased to actually see me. Uh, ooh, <laughs> ooh. And, you know, just to be a part of just working with Gladys Knight. And crazy thing was just we're shooting that with Gladys Knight. Prior to that, I just shot a Spike Lee commercial with Gladys Knight um, for his Capital One with him, Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley. You know, the, you know the Capital Ones that they always, if you see those three. So if you see that commercial floating around, yeah, I did that one, the Gladys Knight one, and the, the Midnight Train in Georgia, and the Jackson 5 one. Um, so just seeing her again, like, hey, Gladys. And she's like, oh. You know, it was... You know, since Gladys Knight, I you know, let's we, we just be like, I'm shooting a scene with Mama Gladys, you know. So it, well, it, it that's the been... perfect segue. That's the perfect segue to to your other uh, craft that that you involve yourself in, Chef Dubs. Um, <laughs> Miss, um, outside of outside of being a DJ and a, and a choreographer, I know you have a affinity. For cooking, um, I I know this one because you know um, you you showcase it readily on Instagram. I know you I know you uh, sometimes during the holidays you you offer uh, you know packages for for, for for food delivery. You know for our you know our our, our celebrity friend clientele and all that. Um, can can you can you tell us a little bit about your goal with the Chef Dubs section of your career? Um, it was, it, it's one of the careers that get to, sh to fully showcase me being me vulnerable and not working under anybody else. It was something that was mm. self-taught. Um, you know, even as a DJ, you, you're, I was self-taught also, so, um, mo most of us are, um, but we still work behind someone and the aspiration is to work for ourselves, like, you know. But now it's like only the producers are being those DJs that are showcased and so on and so forth. It's still, like you said, it's going to be hard work. You're still not on the avenue where you're just getting booked to do the tours and the venues just as you were still backing someone. Um, I've always had a love for cooking. I, I did it when I was younger, helped my family and brothers and sisters. Um, and just because I've toured so much, I had to, I was able to enjoy the benefits of eating it various locations, various countries, and just trying different foods, opening the palate. And we, we, we were in Japan trying some unique stuff. I remember them days. Go ahead. Yeah, man, which is one of my favorite places to visit now. Um, Yo, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's uh, a story. It's a story we got to tell because I thought it was I thought it was dope at the time. Yo, remember when 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 we were on tour, we literally celebrated Halloween twice. Because yes, we. Because we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... And that, happened, that happened again to me with Ariana, and I already thought I was like, "Yes, we celebrate Halloween." Um, because she loves Halloween, but we celebrated twice because we celebrated in LA, and then we had a show the next day, and then we flew out. Like it was, we were in Japan. We celebrated in Japan, and then we flew back to the states. Because <laughs> of the time difference, it was oh. still Halloween. What we doing, yo, son? That was hilarious, hilarious, man. But wow. but go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I I, I interrupted. Nah, nah, that's, a, that's a good. That's a good one. I wish you know. You know, I just wish a part of me had so much footage back then for now, so they can play it. They can play the well, part. Well, we have the... pictures. Like remember, remember, like like me and you took a lot of pictures back in the day. Like like Yo, like I had my camera. I'll send you some. I don't know if you still have some of the pictures, but I'll I'll send some, you some like, of the pictures. I, yeah, I, I'll I'll send you some of those pictures from back in the day. Because you know, I artists, remember one day. Damn. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was saying artists aren't as as vulnerable to being filmed as much as they used to back then. Everything was just such a secret, and you know, we couldn't. We couldn't blog. We couldn't. We could even as ourselves. They wanted everything to to be to be internalized. And I'm so sure. happy that now we're we're able to put it on this platform and say, look what I do. Well, Get it's it's it's, it's a mark. It's a part of the marketing now, right? It's a selling tool. That's it's why tool. it's yeah. different. Like like you know what I'm saying. Like back back when we started, being an artist was 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 the mystique, right? You drop yep. an album every three years and you go away. You could you could have a private life. Nowadays, that's that's not gonna happen, right? Not heard of, but yeah. 
It's unheard of. It's what private life? What? Like, yo, Instagram from your tub right now. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> and agents calling, you gotta put this out. You gotta put this out. I'm feeding my child. Put it out. Like, what? <laughs> but yeah, speaking, yeah. Of, speaking of the food, I it was the only place I got to become me. It was the only place I could take everything I've learned. And you know, like I, I say, the plate is my canvas, it's my stage. Create a performance create a picture that everyone would love. And what I plan to do with this is, um, I do want to, because I love it so much, I do want to start a cooking line. I do want to start, you know, even down to cookware. I do want to start seasonings um, because it's a, it's a different way to give people a part of me and what I like, you know, and I'm, I'm going to find a way to to integrate it with everything I do. You know, if it's like, if it's like, jumping jack jerk cheesing like to, to just integrate it maybe it's coming down to dance lingual integrating it with the the music lingual you know i want to be able to to fuse it all together but i like cooking and i like i've taken it to the to the place it is now because i enjoy watching people have an experience and my life is about creating experiences for everyone as a dancer, right. choreographer, and a DJ. And now I'm able to do it in the comfort of either your own home. I don't want to do a restaurant. I keep saying I don't. Who knows what the man upstairs has for me? Uh, you know, God might be like, you're getting a restaurant. You're gonna work in a restaurant. I keep saying it's 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 spreading myself too much. But a lot of people say you're spreading yourself thin. You, you just might need that. So I'm open to all avenues of it. But right now what I do love doing is giving celebrities that I have worked with a uh, personal experience and full circle. Dodo was one of my main clients as a chef. I was, I've, I've been fortunate to do um, two personal cooking events for her, like, even during her writing sessions. Mm. Double back, uh, working with her as a creative director and she knows I'm a chef and now calling me to be like, yo, I want you to come cook these tacos and this and this meal and so on and so forth. Even now she'll like, hey, I want to jump on you. She's moving into plant-based, being able to link her with other chefs and still talk to her and have like, yo, hey girl, I love you. I miss you. Like, hey Dubs, what's going on? Like, I have I, I can pick up a phone and call Jay hear me Jello. Uh Jojo at any given time because we had that relationship. And I love that about me and her now. You know? We're talking two thousand four to we're talking seventeen years later, we're still we're, you know, we're, we're still connected and she's been able to connect with me on all levels, every single, and minus DJ, but I, I'm okay with that because of every other level we've connected. And that's right. again, that's, that's where the food thing is for me now. Like, um, you know, I don't have a do love you, just for one. Do, do you, do you, do you see yourself? Cause, cause, cause you mentioned it um already but like your your evolution right like as far as like mm -hmm. the, the chef part because not this not and not to not to not to use a pun but djing and choreography and dancing there's there's a bit of a shelf life right like mm -hmm. you have to you evolve you evolve into, mm -hmm. into different spaces like you know when i first started i was doing more clubs now i do more events mm -hmm. um and you know you evolve out of out of certain spaces yeah, I see for you, and maybe this will be something that 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 you can, you know, I guess ponder on. But I see for you as you evolve, there's less DJ dubs, there's less choreography with dubs, and there's more chef dubs. Like, mm. with, like you said, your own line of seasoning <clears throat> in stores, or um, you have your own, or you have your own Salt Bay type yeah, restaurant yeah. joint. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. I had a talk with my best friend the other day, and he was like, similar. And I'm like, yes, everything does have a shelf life, and that food longevity. But, you know, um, because the other two are, are, are so time consuming, everything, I picked three different careers that are fully time consuming, right? That's a fact. Um, my my the best way to 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 tie it all together is they will one will have the longest shelf life all will create me residual income because i won't 
when I'm ready to hang that jacket up, it will be where that jacket is creating me residual income. Where, in terms of? In terms of being in the music industry or the dance industry, um, you know, for, for example, maybe putting out a program that continues to educate the dancers the way and take the uh, take the steps that they needed to um, to get where they got to go. So now I don't have to. Now maybe I'm 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 speaking at events. Um, I am I'm not holding um, you know events as a, a speaker to to educate the dancers on the ins and the outs and creating. Yeah. You know, yeah. same thing with DJing, you know, being able to start an agency that works for DJs and uh, a school and so on and so forth, or a facility that packages it all together. Cool. You got this, you got that, getting into musical production, you know, it's a center. Always, a, you know, we're always going to give be back, DJs. right? It's, it's the, the give, give back. back. <clears throat> it's the give back because, because the, just to go back to, to the beginning of our conversation with us yeah. being green and making. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say foolish mistakes because they, they weren't foolish. They were, they were just, we were just ignorant of, of the situation, right? Mm-hmm. Like if we can stop somebody from making a, a similar mistake we made, that's the give back. Right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I don't ever think, you know, I think I'll just continue to transcend, transcend in higher heights. Uh, I may be creative director now, so on and so forth. Next thing you know, I'm, I am going to be directing. Who knows? I was never, my vision to go there. My vision was to stop and tour the world and walk at carpets as a choreographer. Who knows? Um, I, I, I'm putting myself in a place to tell my child there's nothing that you cannot do. Or my kids, like, you don't have to stick to this or stick to that or stick to that. Everything you love what you do, it, you, you don't have a love for one thing because you love yourself and you love what you do. So everything is, is, um, you're doing it is because of love. So <clears throat> I might go to look at Jazzy. Jazzy's still spinning to this day. Jazzy is so much Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, Jazzy Jeff's household Listen, name. Th- th- these are icons. That's a that's a whole other uh, other other uh, Mount Rushmore of a situation. Jazzy you know, Jeff can be 80 and still DJ. Okay, we will still listen to Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> for real. But it's creating that you know it's. Um, being able because I know because we know music, we know melodies, we will forever be the ox chord. And I don't think mm-hmm. I don't think as a DJ I'll ever stop. Like I may not be doing clubs anymore, but if I want to, I will. I'm it's gonna get to the point where we cross over look at D Nice. D Nice has now become a household name based on this is that's a whole nother beast in the avenue. That, but but see, but see that, that goes back to our conversation of finding your space, right? He yep. found his space and maximized the hell out of it. He did something that, that everyone else was was kind of doing. Like, oh, we're mm-hmm. online. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, but I'm gonna maximize this right now. He figured it out. 2.5, 3 million followers later. So, you know, again. I household I name now, right? D nice is now a household name. Household name. I won't be surprised if they're like, well, no, Adrian, there's auditions. Like, I won't even be surprised if the artist that we I won't even be surprised if someone like J Lo calls D nice for her next door. I won't be surprised at all. Why Th- those, because but see, but they no, but see, but see, those are so high, but they've also said in, you know, there's artists that stick to their DJs and there are artists that go, he's gonna be such in high demand, they need to stay where they they need to. They need to stick to people who they they've had. And again, when they know you have a lane, you're a product of their invest. You're a product of their investment. I have mm-hmm. a lane that D- artists hire me because they know of that. Fergie did it. Mike Posner did it. Um, Ariana did it. Even even down to like Pharrell when he wanted me to do it for Coachella. Um, Cee-Lo done it. Like we we not even gonna talk about the the, the gigs that I don't get. Because of it, the Usher gigs and all of them. We we'll just talk about people like J Lo. See it, they see it because I am able to bring my link to their show. So I, I they, mean, you know. like 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 I said, <clears throat> the 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 DJ dubs portion of of your of your craft is a is a commodity, and yeah. it's something that I think will be mimicked. It's going to be mimicked because mm-hmm. it's such a it's, it's it's such a dope brand. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I've dubs, dancers I, I, now being DJs like. That, that I'm like, 
you're in the right place. I don't have, and I have no, the thing is, I have no problem with, Dubs, can you teach me how to DJ? Yep, get all this, come back and see me. How much? No, yeah. You know. Because listen, boom. listen, listen, listen. I learned something from, I'm not sure if you know who, who DJ Get Live is. Um, D DJ Get Live is, is one of my really good friends. Um, mm -hmm. I learned a lot from him from, from a DJ standpoint, watching yeah. his, what the, the way he maneuvers his lane. He mm -hmm. told me something that made me realize that everything is always going to be fine because mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a sense of every, you know how everybody has the own, everybody has the same music now, right? Like everybody yeah. has the same music. Like, and back in the day, DJs would get booked overseas from New York just because they were from New York. And we mm -hmm. had certain records that you couldn't get. You couldn't get places. anywhere else. Record pools right. giving them to everybody now. Like. Right. Digitally, right? Every Everybody yeah. has everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. Get Live told me, told me this thing, and it sticks with me today. You might have the same records as me, but you're not going to play them the play same way like I me. play them. Yep. <laughs> Facts, right? That's Facts. it. So you're hiring me for me because I'm going to play these records and I'm going to set this place on fire my way. That's why my you're hiring way. me. Mm -hmm. Right. So so when you're teaching young, young, young dancers who want to learn how to DJ to not not, not not necessarily emulate you, but grow from the brand that you've built. Mm -hmm. Yo, branches grow up, grow from a tree. Right. It's got to happen. They grow, and they grow in different ways. Facts. And they no grow tree, in different no, ways. No tree outside is the same. Every facts. tree is unique. Yeah, that's facts. Dubs, we're gonna leave it right there, man. That's that's a gem. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the gem right there, right? That's the gem right there. That is the um, gem, man. Dubs, um, can you tell the people where they can find you on social media and, and follow Yo. all your amazing accolades, please? Uh, I'm I'm in two places at I am DJ Dubs on Instagram at I am Dishes by Dubs on Instagram. Um. You can't you can't find me anywhere else. That is where I drive most of my traffic for now, and I'm open to questions. I'm open to mentorships, and I'm open to to just always giving back. So I love I love the fact that you reached out to me, Reg. Um, I saw a couple. I, I saw four or five was in. So you know I gotta go back. And you already back know because again we just being in that same circle. I I, I wonder. I want. I would love to hear how how our, our families continue to integrate. So, you know, um, if anybody takes anything from this, just know that you can do anything. Anything is possible, and stop at nothing to do what you got to do. Boom, gems, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This is one of my very very good friends, Adrian DJ yeah. Dubs. Yo, nah, um, boy, I'm proud of you, brother. Keep, keep, keep reaching for the stars, man. Um, you, you are you. a and a, a, a super creative, and only more blessings for you. Um, we are out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Wave files. See you on the next one. Woo!